So, we have done quite a bit of uh, mathematics and also numerical analysis to get to a point where we are finally ready to look into Maxwell equations. So, today is all going to be about Maxwell equation and the slide actually is a tribute to the great Scottish mathematician who revolutionized by putting together the individual parts of electricity and magnetism into his famous equation. And one point of remark here is the kind of equation what we here have is not actually due to Maxwell. In fact, when you look at Maxwell's theory, it will be more complicated than this. So, what we call today as Maxwell equation is actually due to Oliver Heaviside and in that sense it is also a tribute to him. So, without further ado, let us go into today's overview. Today's discussion is going to be on Maxwell system itself, but we will start with the continuous partial differential equation system of Maxwell's. And then we will see how this is translating into time domain and frequency domain approach. So, when we say F d T d what we mean is finite difference time domain approach and the other one is finite difference frequency domain approach. So, I am quite happy because uh, these earlier modules we have looked into quite a lot of interesting at the same time quite heavy mathematical discussion whether it is going to be a CFL condition or finite differencing techniques or CD central differencing or forward differencing so on and so forth. All these things converges into a one nice problem space which we call it as Maxwell system and we are going to make use of those uh, finite differencing algorithms or schemes that we have learned so far to our benefit of modeling Maxwellian problems. Let us say we are interested in knowing what is inside the Maxwell system. So, the first equation is the curl of electric field vector is going to be negative of the time derivative of the magnetic field vector. And I am using the word electric field and magnetic field here for E and B. Some engineers might have problem with this, but I am trying to be very careful on saying why I am using the word electric field and magnetic field to E and B and this will become clear in the next slides. So, the next equation is the curl of magnetic excitation is going to be equivalent to time derivative of the electric excitation plus the current density term. Obviously, one of the biggest influence of Maxwell is putting this time derivative of the electric excitation and creating the coupling between the electric field magnetic field and the electric excitation and the magnetic excitation. And obviously, there are also two other equations which comes quite often one is the electric Gauss law which says the divergence of the electric excitation should be equivalent to the charge contained within the volume where rho is the volume charge density and the divergence of the magnetic field B is equal to 0. When you use these equations and manipulate them you essentially get when you take the divergence of this equation and use the values accordingly what you get is the charge continuity equation which says the divergence of the electric current density is equal to the negative of the time derivative of the volume charge density. So, when you apply certain manipulation on the second equation and substitute the values in the other equations, what you will get is let us say if you take the divergence here and what you can apply the values in the other equations, you will essentially get the last equation. So, there was a reason why I mentioned that the E and B fields are called as the electric and magnetic field because there is something fundamentally similar about them and that is something that you can see when you look into the Lorentzian force. So, Lorentz force is nothing but the force acting on the unit electric charge and also on the charge that is moving at the velocity v. So, if you see the value of the Lorentzian force is given by the sum of the forces acting on 
the charge. One will be due to the stationary charge, the other one will be the charge which is moving at a velocity v. So, since uh, E and B, but not E and H that is involved in the force definition, E and B are very similar kind of quantities. So, that is why it is rightful to call electric field and magnetic field as E and B and not E and H. As contrary to many of the engineering literature, I am using the term here. Uh, if you look into some of the very well known physicists like Sommerfeld and uh, also Richard Feynman, they have always uh, used this form of notation. So, we will use electric field and magnetic field given by E and B and we will use the word D and H as the electric and magnetic excitation. And this is also something will become clear when you look into the finite differencing algorithm that uh, we will have E and B that are in the same space whereas, D and H will be in a different space. And the D and H are the electric and magnetic excitation and the J and rho V are the electric current density and charge volume density respectively. And the units are given here. It is also interesting to look at all these quantities as densities of some fundamental quantities. So, electric field will be the line density of the voltage. Similarly, the electric excitation is the surface density of the charge. And similarly, when you look at magnetic excitation, it is the line density of the current. And the electric current density is given by J and the charge volume density is given by rho V. So, in simple sense, what I wanted to say is they are all of them are some kind of densities of some functions. So, if you take a source free region, what we will have essentially is we will not have the J component in the equation, you will simply have the value given by the time derivative of the D is equal to the curl of H. Similarly, the time derivative of B is equal to minus curl of E and the divergence of D will be 0 and the divergence of B will also be 0. As you can know these are all field quantities in 3 dimensions and they have individually 3 components where the dx, dy, dz are the scalar components in x, y and z direction for D. Similarly, you will have for other field quantities their respective uh, field components. It is important to know so far I have not used any material components. The, when I say material components, what I mean is the permittivity and permeability. And this will come into play when we are relating B and H or D and E. So, that is what we have uh, to define before doing any mathematical modeling. So, the relationship between D and B, H and B will be given by the material relationships. In other words, the permittivity and permeability. So, epsilon is the permittivity and mu is the permeability. This is the information for that we will be using in the Maxwell system. So, if we can use this information in the Maxwell system, what we essentially transform B on the right hand side will become mu H and the D on the right hand side of the second equation will become epsilon E. And similarly, we will bring the uh, time derivative on the left hand side and keep the spatial derivatives on the right hand side. We will have an equation of this form and we can set divergence of E is equal to 0 and uh, divergence of H equal to 0. It is important to notice that divergence of H need not be 0 all the time. This is something that we need to look into because the reason why divergence of B equal to 0 does not naturally give us divergence of H is equal to 0 will become clear if we understand what is the relationship between B and H in a more general case. So, if you have B which is given by these are all vector quantities. So, in the general case the B value will be given by mu times H plus m. So, m will be the magnetization uh, parameter. So, when we say the divergence of B is equal to then we will have two components here which is basically mu times the divergence, divergence of H plus the divergence of m. So, when this becomes 0, 
it does not mean that this becomes 0 because there might be also component that is coming from the divergence of m. So, it is important to know since we have a general equation which is basically saying b is equal to mu h m we have to always account for the magnetic component as well. So, divergence of b equal to 0 does not mean always the divergence of h is equal to 0. So, divergence of h equal to 0 is not always it is not always. So, this value will become 0 only when the magnetization component is also 0. In certain magnetic material you might be knowing that you might compute the divergence of B will be 0, but the, there will be still some divergence of the magnetic excitation which is H. So, with that being said it is important to notice that this is not the general case even when B is 0 it is enough to know this, but in this case let us assume that the magnetization component is also 0 hence we will have the divergence of H is equal to 0. For a general problem as I said we can combine all the components into one vector which we call it as u and uh, this is a vector quantity and we will have the value of uh, the first curl equation written in the matrix form where you will have the individual curl components given here. So, if you expand this you will get three components the curl will have three components the x component will be given by dy hz minus dz hy similarly the y component will be dx hz and uh, dz hx and the z component will be dx hy minus dy hx and remember these are all partial differentiation not uh, normal differentiation. So, you have to pay attention to that. So, similarly what we will get is also uh, a set of three equations for the Maxwell curl equation related to the partial differentiation with respect to uh, time for h is equal to the curl of E and we will get three components for the x, y and z for h x, h y and h z and so far we have still been in the continuous case continuous because still we have the partial differentiation with respect to time which is continuous and the partial differentiation with respect to x, y and z which is also continuous. So, what we will do now is we will find a way to use the finite differencing algorithms that we have learnt in the previous lectures to derive the finite differencing algorithm and this will give us a very nice starting point to model some of the problems uh, that we have in engineering applications. So, we will cut back to you in the next module. Thank you.